Hello and welcome back to the channel and to this next video of the KNX video series. Now in the last video we got to know to the diagnostic tools of KNX and can see what happens on the KNX twisted pair bus. Therefore we can now start to take a look at the different functions that we can program in KNX. And we will start with that after the intro with the blind function. So I'm back here in the EDS6 in our sample project that we created in the last videos. And here we currently have a push button sensor as well as a switching actuator. And now we want to program blind functionality. Therefore, we first of all have to take a look at the devices that we need. So of course, we need a push button sensor in order to tell whether the blind should move up or down. Other than that, you could also use, for example, in visualization or a panel where you directly input the value that you want the blinds to move at. But for now, we will stick to the push button sensor. And then the next device that we need is a blind actuator because the switching actuator can't be used for that. Instead, we need a blind actuator. The difference between those is that a blind actuator has two relays per channel output. One relay for up and one for down. And they are also mechanically locked from each other. So that there isn't the case where both relays are turned on because that could either destroy the motor of the blind or it could set it into programming mode. Therefore, we use blind actuators because there it is ensured that this doesn't happen. Now in our project, we currently don't have a blind actuator. Therefore, let us add it. To add the blind actuator, which is simulated by KNX Virtual, I first of all open up the catalogs page. And there I scroll down to KNX Virtual, which I can find here or KNX Association, and there we now need blinds control. I use the version 2.4. You might have a newer version, but this is the current version that is available. And I simply drag and drop it to my twisted pair line. Now after adding it, let's take a look at the parameters of the devices. So therefore, first of all, I will start with our push button sensor. There into the parameters, and there we want that the second channel is for blind movement. Therefore, we simply go to channel 2 and change the function here from switching to blinds. Now you can either use no feedback or with feedback. With feedback simply means that the LEDs, which are simulated by the color, are then turned to yellow when the blind is between 0 and 100% and to red when the blind is fully moved down, so to 100%. I will enable with feedback so that we can also take a look at this function. And now if we take a look at the group objects, you will now see that we have three group objects instead of two for the switching case. And why is that? Well, therefore, let's talk about how blind function works in KNX. In KNX, the default function is that the push button sensor differentiates between a short button press and a long button press. When you press the button long, well, then it is associated to blind movement, so either up or down. When you press the button short, well, then it is associated to a stop command, so then the blind stop. And if the blind also have movable slats, well, then the short button press is also to move the slats either up or down depending on which side of the rocker you press. For real KNX push buttons you can also enable a one button control where after each press the movement direction changes. And because of that this isn't the best solution for blind movement but you might use it for example for garage doors. And this is why we have three group objects. One for the long button press, so the move object then we have one for the short button press, so step stop. And last but not least, we also have our feedback object. So our push button sensor now is set up correctly. Therefore, let's take a look at the blind actuator. For the blind actuator, we also have three group objects 
for our channel. So here channel 1 we have move, step, stop and position. So everything's fine, isn't it? Well, here you have to be careful because position doesn't mean that it is the feedback. Position here means that you can use this group object for example to hook it up to a visualization panel and there with the slider you can define the correct position where the blind should move to. So this isn't the feedback but the rather the specification of the position that you want the blind to move to. Therefore let's take a look at the parameters if we can enable the feedback there. And here you can see the configuration of channel 1 and here we have it, info position. I will enable it. Now let's take a look at the other options that we have here. Here down below we can enable different alarm functions. So for example storm and rain detection which you hook up to your weather station so that the blinds don't get damaged for example by the storm. We also have fire and intrusion alarm and down below here we can define which priority they have. Now for a normal blind actuator you would also typically define the time the blind needs to move up and down because based on this the blind actuator then calculates on which position the blind currently is. Now in this case this setting is fixed to I think 10 seconds but in real cases you would have to stop the time the blind needs. Now there are also actuators that calculate it automatically by measuring the current. So by measuring the current they know whether the blind is moving or not. But what you will see often is that you have to define this time. Another thing is that you can normally also say in which direction the blind should move when one of those alarms gets activated. Here in this case I can't define that as this is predefined. But for learning how blind function works in KNX this is already fully sufficient. Now that we have set up our blind actuator let's take a look at the group objects. And now we can see that we have four group objects for our channel 1. First of all move function, step, so long and short button press then the position as well as the feedback position. So now we have set up our devices correctly. Therefore let's create the group addresses. So I open up the workplace and their group addresses and add a new main group. Now I will call it blind and there in blind I will now create four middle groups. First of all up down for our movement then we also have step stop, so stop for blinds and the step is only if you have movable slats. And then we also have the position and the feedback position. With that in place we can now create our group addresses. Let me quickly check where the push button sensor was associated to which room was the office therefore I will create a group address with the name window office and again I will write down for which function it is so up down here then let me quickly copy window office so that I don't have to write it down every time now step stop I will simply call it stop then we have position with pos and the feedback position I will call F and POS, so feedback position. You can call it whatever you want and now that we have created our group addresses we can hook them up to our group objects. So let's start with the push button sensor. They are blind control move to up down, step stop to step stop and the feedback to feedback position. Then to our blind actuator move to up down step stop to stop, position to position and another thing you can also do to to connect a group object to a group address is that you click right on it, link with and now you can also see the group objects that you the group addresses that you can use for this group object. Now I will use 230 as it is the feedback position simply click on link and this is also a way on connecting 
group objects to group addresses. So with that finished, we can now download the changes to the devices. Therefore, I first of all check that I have set up the correct interface, Knix Virtual, which is the case. And now I can go to the dynamic folder, modified devices, and there I should see my push button sensor. Simply click download partial, so it only downloads the changes to the device. You can see it here. Now this time it failed, so let me simply check if download application works. Okay, so this is the case. And then initial device is the blind control as the blind actuator currently doesn't have its physical address. Therefore, I have to download everything onto it. So download all and to download everything. I have to click the corresponding programming button, which is D2. And after clicking it, you should see that everything downloads onto it. It has gotten its physical address. And to see whether it works, I first of all open up the diagnostics. So simply starting the group monitor and now I open up KNX Virtual. And as you already see, the second rocker is configured correctly. And also channel 1 of D2 is configured. And in your case, this blind shouldn't be moved down. In my case, this is because I already tested it before I recorded this video. And I didn't move it up in between. So now let's check if the blind moves up. As you can see, everything works as intended. I can stop it. And now let's see what happens here. First of all, we have our group address 200, so the movement address, and there we say move up. Then we have 210, which was the stop address. And now don't be bothered by the value here with decrease. This is needed because if you have movable slats, then depending on the value here, the slats either, either move down or up. And in the case of normal clients where you don't have those slats, there it is simply important that Telegram is sent to this address and the value itself doesn't matter for the blind actuator. When it sees a Telegram on this address, it simply stops the movement. Now I can also move it down, stopping it. And if we move it completely down, you should see 100% and these LEDs turn to red. Now what you also noticed is that the blinds only update their position after the movement finished. And this is also normally the case for real blind actuators. Why you may ask? Because if you imagine for example a building with a lot of blind actuators and weather station with a central function for storm protection. And then a storm is detected, every blind moves up and they periodically update their position every second. Then the limit of 50 telegrams per second on twisted pair is reached pretty fast. And therefore the normal setting is that they only update once after finishing the movement. There are actuators where you can change it so that it also sends it periodically. But as I said, the normal case is after the movement has finished, then the feedback is sent. Now what we can also check is if the position object also works as intended. Because remember, we created this group address with position where we can define the position the blind should move to. And we can send group addresses or telegrams with the group monitor. So I specify the group address 220 and now I specify the value. So for example, 30%, I click on write and change to KNX virtual. And as you can see, the blind is moving up and it should stop now around 30%. Now you can see 28%. It doesn't exactly reach this value because the time for the blind movement itself simply is too short that it can reach exactly this value. But for a real blind with, for example, 40, 30 seconds movement time, this would be the correct position. And this is how easily you can implement blind functionality in KNX. So that's that for this video. Let us quickly summarize what we need for blind movement in KNX. Well, first of all, a push button sensor or visualization panel and a blind actuator. Or a switching actuator where you can set two of its outputs to blind movement. Then we need at least two group addresses for blind movement. First of all, up down, so the long button press and 
the short button press, the stop step group address. Then we can also have two additional group addresses, the position and the feedback position. And with that we can achieve blind functionality in KNX. Pretty simple, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed the video, if so consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. If you have any questions left or video suggestions, leave them down in the comments below and I'm excited to see you in the next video when we take a look at the next fundamental function in KNX, light dimming. So see you there.